Hi, this is Scott Weingold over at College Made Simple. And today what I want to talk about are the different types of college savings plans that are out there, what you should be looking for in a college savings plan, and then go through the pros and cons of the different ones that are available to you. So to start out, some of the things you should be looking for, number one, you want guarantees. You want to know that the money is going to be there when you need it to be. You don't want to know that um, you know, the day before you need access to it, you're going to lose 50% of it. You want the money to be liquid. Um, you want to be able to have access to it when you need access to it. You don't want it to be locked up in something where you just you can't get it or you have to wait six months or a year, whatever it may be. Um, tax favored status. Obviously, if there's any tax advantages that are available in the plan, you want to take advantage of them. And financial aid formulas. How is the college savings plan going to have an impact on financial aid? You just got to be aware of how the different accounts are going to affect you for financial aid, and it's a lot of times depending on the type of school you're looking at, but you want to be aware of them. So to go through, we highlighted uh, seven different plans that are probably the most common options that parents have nowadays. So just to run through this list, mutual funds. Um, you could put money that you're saving for college into stock or bond mutual funds. And some of the upsides there, or the pros, um, are that the money, there, there's unlimited potential for growth. Um, so that's one of the upsides. The downside, however, and the flip side to that is that there's unlimited potential for loss, too. And um, you got to know that if you're putting your money into mutual funds, the money may not be there when you need it to be. So you have to weigh that out if it's something, the risk you're worth taking. Mutual funds typically will count against you in the financial aid formulas, whether they're held in the, held in the parent's name or the child's name, so you got to be aware of that. 529 plans, um, for the right family, 529 plans aren't necessarily a bad thing. It's just that I, I find that everyone turns to them thinking that they're the answer to saving for college, and I personally don't think that they are. Um, 529 plans, um, once again, depending on the type of fund that you buy inside the 529, um, you have the potential for great upside. You also have the potential for loss. Some of the downsides are that there's typically high fees involved in the 529 plans. Uh, you're only able to access the money for college. Otherwise, you pay a penalty and taxes on top of it. Um, some of the pros of a 529 also are that um, if you do use the money for college and everything works out and the money's there and it's grown, then you could access the money tax-free. So that is a benefit, just that a lot of these plans haven't seen any kind of gains in them. So, um, you know, you got to weigh that out. CDs. CDs are good in the sense that um, they're FDIC insured currently up to $250,000 so that no matter what happens, you are guaranteed to get the money. Um, the downside, though, is that those do account against you for financial aid. Um, and the money in a CD right now currently pays probably for a one-year CD, might pay you half a percent interest. So they're, they're not even keeping up with inflation by any stretch of the imagination. So um, that's one of the downsides with CDs. They're extremely safe but there's no real return to them and they're gonna count against you for financial aid. And when you factor in the zero, basically zero return and the financial aid implications, you're almost going backwards. Same thing with a money market account, depending on where the money market's held, it could also be FDIC insured. These are paying next pretty much zero, in essence zero right now. So once again, they're safe and I like safe, that's good, it fits into guarantees and liquidity, um, but they are gonna count against you and there's really no growth potential whatsoever. Fixed annuities. Fixed annuities are good from the standpoint of um, they typically have a higher yield than, than like a CD does. Um, the money is protected typically from financial aid formulas. Um, however, the money is locked up and that you're typically, for most annuities, you're only able to access 10% a year when you need them or else you face steep penalties to get out of them. Some annuities are different, but most of them work that way. So you got to weigh the pros and cons of that. Retirement accounts, like a 401k plan. Um, the money in a 401k plan doesn't count against you, so that's good. Um, however, new contributions made to these plans, once your child hits typically their junior year in high school, new contributions will count against you. And you can't just go and take $100,000 and throw it into a retirement account. There's obviously limitations to what you can put in. And then when you do want to take the money out of them, um, you're going to be penalized to take the money out. You're going to have to pay taxes on it, assuming you're, you're pre-59 and a half and that income typically counts against you for financial aid as well. So retirement accounts are pretty tough, and, and especially because the big one is the liquidity. It's not liquid at all. Cash value life insurance. Cash value life insurance can be a good tool for the right person, um, depending how it's set up. Uh, 
it, it offers guarantees, it offers liquidity, it offers tax favored status, whether it's either tax deferred or potentially tax free, depending on how it's set up. And it is also protected from the financial aid formulas. So um, it tends to be a good program, depending on how you have to make sure it's set up right, that it's overfunded so that it's focused on um, maximizing the growth of the policy, not the death benefit. Um, but some of the downsides of a cash value life insurance policy is depending on how it's set up, you might pay some penalties to take money out prior to 59 and a half. Um, you're not going to have the upside potential of investing in a tech fund, um, but at the same time, it's a slow and steady, you know exactly what you're getting, um, safe uh, type of way to save for college. So there you have it. There's seven of the most common types of college savings plans that are out there. Um, for more information on saving for college, uh, check us out at www.collegemadesimple.com. Thanks.